So in this video, we're going to look at how to analyze low resolution NMR spectra. Now, low resolution NMR spectra could be obtained well, could be obtained for both uh, carbon thirteen NMR or hydrogen NMR, and in both cases, they're going to they, the premise and the and the the way that we analyze both of these two different types of spectrums is the same. Except in this case, we're going to deal with it. We're going to deal with hydrogen spectrum in, in the few examples that we're going to look at here. However, we do the same. We, we analyze carbon NMR spectra in the same way. However, the only difference is in the values of the chemical shift that we're going to come across. Now, here I've got a basic example of a low resolution NMR spectra. On the, on the horizontal axis, we have chemical shift in parts per million. And uh, on the vertical axis, we don't, there's, there is no particular scale on the vertical axis. However, we have peaks at the chemical shifts that are, that, that are observed in, in the molecule that we are testing. Now, uh, you might have noticed that we've got our zero point marked here, and we go, as we move right to left, uh, our chemical shift value increases. This is a, that's a bit, I guess, counterintuitive. However, that's, that's how these, these spectra work. And so obviously, the peak at zero here is going to be our TMS peak. And so we've got peaks at uh, chemical shifts of just over one here, at a chemical shift of two, and a chemical shift of 4.1 or 4.2 here. So how do we analyze low resolution NMR spectra? Well, basically there are two, two, two things that we look for in any spectra. We look for uh, the chemical shift of our peaks. So we're, we're analyzing what's going on in the peaks. So the two things we look for is chemical shift and the height of our peaks. So chemical shift helps us uh, identify what the sort of structure, what the what the what the in this case in the case of a hydrogen spectra of a hydrogen spectrum. Chemical shift helps us identify the atomic environment that the hydrogen is in. So as we've got this little this little list in blue on the right hand side here, this list tells us that tells us what what structures are, are likely to have caused chemical shifts in certain ranges. And so if by by uh, looking at and thinking about the chemical shift of our peaks, we can obtain information about the atomic environment of the hydrogen atoms that caused those peaks or the carbon atoms that caused those peaks. Now the other thing that we look for is the height of our peaks. So although I said before the vertical axis has no scale as such, we do sort of analyze, it is important to analyze the height of our peaks. Now what the height tells us is it tells us the number of atoms in the environment. So if we've got two peaks and one of those peaks is twice as big as the other. Let's say we've got a spectrum under here, we we'll just we won't draw the axes, we've just got a spectrum here and we've got two peaks. And one of these peaks is twice as big as the other. So we'll say this is peak A, this is peak B. Well but if this peak if peak B is twice as high as peak A what that means is that there are twice as many uh, atoms in the environment that caused peak B than there are atoms in the environment that caused peak A. So here we've got relative uh, areas in our, in our example up here of 2, 3 and 3. And what that means is that in these two peaks here, there are uh, one and a half times as many atoms in, in the environments that caused these peaks as there are in the environment that caused these, this peak here. So that's, that provides an extra little, uh, little really useful piece of information when we're analyzing, uh, when we're analyzing NMR spectra. So that, they're the two things that we look for in low resolution spectra. And so let's go through the spectrum that we've got here. Basically, this is the spectra for ethyl ethanoate. So we've got, we'll just draw out the structure of our ethyl ethanoate here.
So that is ethyl ethanoate. So let's look at how this why this spectrum makes sense for this molecule. Well, obviously the first peak means nothing to us. That is just our standard zero peak uh, produced by the TMS that we've added to the sample. So first of all, let's look at the chemical shifts. Well, here we've got a chemical shift of just over 4, 4.1, 4.2. We look over here, and this is the structure that can cause a peak at a chemical shift of 4.1. So we've got an, an alkyl group bonded to a C double bond O, and then the, this carbon is also bonded to an O, CH2, and then another alkyl group. And it's these hydrogens here that are causing the peak at 4.1. So we've got, we've got that exact setup over here. We've got our first alkyl group, our carbon, double bond oxygen, then the carbon bonded with another oxygen, and then CH2, and then another alkyl group. So these hydrogens here are the same as these hydrogens here. And so that they are likely to have produced this peak here. And that makes further sense because if this has a relative area of two, we know that there are two hydrogens in this part, in, in this atomic environment. So that makes sense. Now if we look over here, we've got a peak at exactly 2. Its relative, relative area is 3. Now we see that this structure here can cause a, a, a peak at a chemical shift of 2.0. So we look over here, we've got the exact same structure here. It's CH3, C, double bond O, and then the carbon is bonded with another oxygen, and then an alkyl group. Here we've got that same C double bonded O with a C, bonded to another oxygen and then an alkyl group. So these, car these hydrogens here are the same as these hydrogens here. And so it's likely that these hydrogens, almost certain that these hydrogens caused this peak at a chemical shift of 2.0. Now again, if we look at the height, that makes sense again because the, our relative height here is three and we've got three hydrogens in this environment. So that all seems in order. Now, it's a bit harder for us to sort of, I guess, confirm that where or confirm the origin or the cause of this peak here. We've got obviously three hydrogens left over that we haven't yet analyzed. This relative height is three, and so we know that this peak is caused by these three hydrogens. However, we can't use our chemical shift data to confirm that. We know that an alkyl bonded to a CH3 group produces a chemical shift between 0.8 and 1. However, this chemical shift is outside that range, and it is a different in and these these hydrogens here are in a different environment to these hydrogens here. They're not bonded. These ones here are not bonded to an alkyl group. However, it's a, you could say that you can look at it and see that these are in a slightly similar situation, perhaps, and so that's why the chemical shift is close to this range, but not quite in it. However, we can't really use any chemical shift data to help us identify this peak. But we can tell that it was caused by these three hydrogens because we've analysed and uh, confirmed where these other two peaks here came from. So that is our spectrum for ethyl ethanoate. Now, if we want to go through another example, it can be hard, it's, it's very difficult for us to simply identify the, uh, a chemical or the, the, a, an unknown compound simply from its NMR spectrum. We often need to use other, other forms of spectroscopy and other forms of analysis to really uh, confirm that we, are, that we are on the right track, confirm what we're dealing with. So let's just, rather than, rather than using a spectra to determine the identity of an unknown compound, in this example, we're going to do something slightly different. We're going to look at propanoic acid. I'm going to look at the peaks that it would cause on an NMR spectra. So here we've got our propanoic acid. So we can see that there are three different hydrogen environments in this molecule to start with. We've got these three hydrogens in one environment, these two in another environment, and lastly, this one is in its own unique environment. And what that means, we've got three hydrogen environments, which means we're going to have three peaks on our low resolution NMR spectra, hydrogen NMR spectra. So we're looking at the peaks on a, as I said, a hydrogen NMR spectra here, not a carbon NMR spectra. So we're going to have three peaks. And so let's look at what will the relative height of these peaks be? Well, 
I guess it's quite simple. Obviously, these three peaks will be located at appropriate chemical shifts. So they are, this hydrogen will be uh, at the chemical shift that, it, that most hydrogens in carboxyl groups will be at. This chemical shift will display the, the standard uh, will, will, these hydrogens, sorry, the, the peak caused by these hydrogens will display the standard chemical shift for the for hydrogens that are bonded to a carboxyl group. And lastly, these three hydrogens will again display a unique chemical shift appropriate to their position and location within the molecule. Now, these three peaks, what will their relative heights be? Well, we can see that we've got uh, three hydrogens underlined in red. So the first environment, first proton environment contains three hydrogen atoms. The second proton environment contains two, and the last contains one. So we're going to have peaks of relative sizes three, two, and one. So we can see that the relative height we're going to have. If we if we wanted to say, if we wanted to look at this molecule and say, okay, what is our spectra going to look like? We can say that. We're going to have three peaks, one of relative height 3, one of relative height 2, and one of relative height 1. So we can obtain that information simply by looking at the molecule. So it's not only chemical shift data that's very important to help us analyse low resolution NMR spectra, but also height, the height of our peaks. And uh, so they're the two ways, the two sort of approaches that we take when we're looking at low resolution spectra. And in another video, we'll, go, we'll look at high resolution spectra and how they're other factors come into play in helping us analyze these substances.